Oh, my God, Dave Chappelle's such a meanie. And making fun of people again, I can't take it. It's making fun of people. That's right, shocker, people. Dave Chappelle makes jokes for a living. You haven't seen him in a movie or a TV show or anything else. He got to make money somehow. So making jokes is what he does. And he does it on Netflix. And now people are very sad. Very sad. Because he punching. You can't punch down at the less fortunate. That's not how you make people you know, feel included when you can just make jokes about anybody. Anyway, let's talk about the Dave Chappelle situation. I am the man you may know as Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You. And if you like content like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Share amongst your friends. But as we take a look at it, everybody's real mad at Dave Chappelle. And I just finished watching Dave Chappelle Dreamer. And, while I, and, and what's fascinating, uh, Dave Chappelle Dreamer's number one streaming on Netflix currently. Number 10 streaming at the time that I looked at this was Sticks and Stones. So now his other his other show is getting taken a look at. So people are taking a look. I don't think people realized that he was going to drop one on January 1st. So nobody was really sure that it was there yet. But people are very interested. So, because uh, I, I, I think I reviewed, I know I reviewed Sticks and Stones. I know I reviewed The Closer. And the Dreamer just came out, and uh, it's actually it's it's kind it's an interesting one. It's kind of melancholy, in a sense. And uh, what I'm going to show you is it's it he cut he goes all over the place. It's 56 minutes. I thought it was very good, not as good as Sticks and Stones, but let's just take a quick gander at the Rotten Tomato meter. And it's been out for like this will be the second day. It'll be out. You can take a look for yourself because it's going to change. But no critics have touched this yet, the dreamer, because he makes jokes about people you can't talk about, apparently. But right now, the audience score, it's only 100 plus ratings and zero audience. There's one review. Let's look at our lonely review. Oh, come on. It's already a negative one. (laughs) <laughs> the dreamer is a lazy victory lap from the man with nothing else of value to offer to the to offer the world beyond self-congratulatory musings on his own legacy, a lethargic effort aimed at solely at fueling the far right grievance industrial complex for another week. The man, this is his opinion. <laughs> He even talks about it. He's like, I never should have made fun of those people. It's more trouble than it was worth. We're talking about the T's from the LGBTQs. So he... (laughs) And he promises... He starts off with a joke about transgender people. Now, I thought the joke was a really long setup. And I I don't necessarily think it's... The the premise of the joke isn't that... I mean, it's funny. And it made me laugh. But the premise of the joke is, is about Jim Carrey and seeing Jim Carrey doing his best to pretend to be Andy Kaufman, and that's how Dave Chappelle feels about transgender people. Now, I don't think it's the best joke in the world, but I think him going after trans people again and then being like, I'm only going to tell four or five more jokes about trans people in this episode is amusing. It kind of indicates he's not done yet, and uh, everybody's mad. It feels like everybody just watched like the first five minutes and then stopped watching because they were angry but let's take a look at what everybody else has to say dave chappelle obsessed with trans people i don't know if i agree with that but it could have been so much more than let me show me your guts why have you not reviewed it yet rolling stone marlo stern it's been two days and you haven't reviewed it and you wrote a whole article about it but you're too scared to put it on Rotten Tomatoes. Why? Because you're afraid people will go a- go after you. Because I'm sure this is behind a paywall. I can't read the full article. I can only read part of it. So clearly something else is going on here. And then you have CNN running another hit piece on Dave Chappelle. Audience members walk off stage. Now the way that they pit, they they put they uh, position this. 
Dave Chappelle walked off stage, blames audience members who don't follow the rules. If I'm about to write a, if I if I'm about to do a show, and I'm about to release it on Netflix, I don't want any of my jokes getting out there because I don't want to ruin the special. Every comedian does it these days. They all have rules where you can no longer film their specials ahead of time. They all have these little plastic bags that you have to put your things in. Rogan's talked about it. Everybody talks about it. They all make sure that you can't film it. Plus, they want you paying attention to the show. If you're not there to see the show, don't come there with your phone. Don't, you know, it's it's an hour. You can give them an hour. But Dean Obadala, Obadala, I don't know what this guy, a former inter- attorney, says, I don't blame the audience when things go off script. And, uh, oh, back in the days when he was a full-time comedian, bro, you work for CNN. You ain't a full-time comedian. Nobody's laughing at your jokes. Dave Chappelle is one of the greatest of all time. Uh, but he does, He at least this time, he says it's 100% the audience's fault because he did a, a show in, in Florida. But what you have to understand is is maybe this guy didn't write the headline because the headline seems like he's trying to bash Dave Chappelle. So uh, what was it that it was a cell phone that rang them off? Yes. They were recording his act, which is, again, a big, big no-no. So then let's just take a look. Who else has something to say about this? USA Today. Dave Chappelle goes after the disabled community in The Dreamer. I love punching down. He knew they were going to take that clip from him and post it. (laughs) The funniest part is he makes fun of that politician. And I there's a politician, well, former politician, who um, is handicapped. What the heck's his name? It doesn't matter because he's not a politician anymore. He was in the audience. At the end, Dave always likes to show photos of like all the people that he talked to and and all the things that were going on. And he he talks about the the former politician and the guy was in the audience and laughing at the jokes. And that's the point. Like it's not it's, it's not real. They're jokes. He was making fun of some of his best friends. He was making fun of Jamie Foxx. And he showed Jamie Foxx picture on stage. He made fun of Jon Stewart. He made fun of uh, Chris Rock, which was some... He went hard against Chris Rock. <laughs> and he's like... He even was making fun of himself, where he he got he failed on a joke because he didn't know what to do, and Chris Rock did a better job. <laughs> so, especially... He talked about a lot of things that were personal to him. When, they, when he got attacked on stage, when Chris Rock got attacked on stage. So... Um, now they're mad. <laughs> the funniest part is he says that the, the disabled community can't come against him because they're not as organized, which I thought was a pretty good joke. He even went after Little Nas X, where he had pictures of Little Nas X. And Little Nas X, it, there was nothing wrong with it. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't, like I said, I don't think it's as funny as his other special, but it had more personal moments, which I liked. And it was more about like what was going on in his life. It's a really long rambling closing setup that I, I about a Russian gangster running a club that didn't really pay off in anything because he completely flipped it to Little Nas X. But I thought overall it was pretty good. 85, yeah, it's like in the B range. It's not the best Dave Chappelle thing ever. But hey, one of the greatest stand-up comedians we have going right now and consistently makes me laugh. So good job. Um, and him coming back to his old community so people are just mad about the Jim Carrey method acting joke. And look, it, 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 you know, he's a, that's the point. The more people make jokes about these things, the more normalized they get. If you're, if you're not, if you're on the table to be made fun of, then you're part of us. We're all allowed to be made fun of. And I think most people get that when it, cause Chappelle is the furthest thing from far right. I can think of, you know, uh, what is it? Madison Cawthorn is who he was making fun of, who was the disabled um, former congressman <laughs> in the orgies in the government. Uh, so, yeah, he makes jokes about his own attack, which I thought could have been funnier. He had a, a, a mildly funny uh, Huckleberry Finn joke. But overall, I, I give it a recommend. You should definitely watch it. If you're looking for something to laugh at, Dave Chappelle's going to give you something to laugh at. It's definitely better than, I think it was Sticks and Stones, 
the closer was real good. Uh, maybe it was one of them was a little, eh, but but the last two have been the last one was fire, and this one was real good. I, the one with the the car joke with everybody in the car was real good. But if you're a, if you're a Dave Chappelle or comedy fan, you got to see this one. Seems like the media is in full blown attack mode because Dave does what Dave does. I I will say it was he was also very brave for telling a very bad joke. I mean, it's really funny because he even said his wife hates the joke. He told a Titanic joke, and the Titanic it was about the uh, the submarine that visited the Titanic. And he's like, I'm gonna go visit the Titanic someday when I'm seventy. He's like, I hope it works by then. What a terrible, stupid, stupid joke! Because it's one of those jokes that you're like, oh, is it too soon? But it's also his joke is, is terrible, and he knows he's telling a terrible joke. But of course, you have to talk like this, and you'll get it if you see it. How <laughs> this is so such a bad joke? I think I have to be leaning back to get the joke better. But anyway, let me know what you think down below. Were you mad about Dave Chappelle? Do you think he should stop punching down? Has it become irrelevant? I don't think so. I think Dave's still on point, as good as he's ever been. I'd love to see him do something other than stand-up, maybe. Maybe do a movie or something? I don't know. Maybe he's just not in the mood for that. Maybe it's too much pressure for him. Let me know what you think down below, because I'm interested in conversation on this one. But anyway, that's all she wrote for us here. If you could, like, subscribe. You know what to do. Check out our podcast. It's free to you. You can catch it on uh, what iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, even see us on Rumble if you like. Anyway, we love all y'all, but I am on to the next one.